when it comes to investing there's lots to consider like where should you be investing your money how much should you be investing and what's the best way to stay updated and educate yourself on what's currently happening in the stock market to make sure that you don't miss out on any hidden gems and stay away from any bad investments that will hurt your profits throughout the course of this video i'll be showing you an exact blueprint of a step-by-step -step strategy that you can follow to make sure that you have the most effective investing strategy even if you're starting off with just $100. First thing to keep in mind is educating yourself on the stock market. A great way to do this is by reading books or the way that I prefer is just to listen to them. I personally use Audible and this just allows me to consume the information that's in the books without having to actually set aside any time to read them. I personally play them at about 1.2 to 1.3 time speed so that I can get through the book a bit quicker. Some great books to look at are The Intelligent Investor, Rule Number One Investing and also Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad isn't specifically about investing but it definitely will improve your finances and the way you think about money and chances are if you're interested in the topic of investing you'll be interested in the topic of money as a whole. So those are some great books to get you started and I'd really recommend just playing them in your car. It's much more convenient than having to sit down and physically read a book and it's also much cheaper as well. Risks only come when you don't know what you're doing so having more information about investing and money as a whole will be a great way to make you more confident in investing. YouTube channels are also a great source of information. I like Andre Jick and Graham Stephan. It's always good to get information from different sources so that you have different opinions on the same topic. You always have to make sure to do your own research before making an investment and don't just blindly follow information that you might have heard from a video or a TikTok or a book that you might read you have to make your own conclusions about these things take everything you hear with a grain of salt and don't just take it as gospel and follow what somebody else is doing number two is looking at the best place to put your money when it comes to investing the two main options that you have are ETFs or individual stocks so with ETFs they're theoretically a lot safer because your money is spread out amongst multiple different companies but again they don't really give you such a great reward that you can get with individual stocks so you really have to balance out your risk versus reward tolerance. With ETFs it's really just a basket of stocks that has a particular goal. So you can get ones that will track a specific sector in the market like healthcare, ones that might track new and innovative companies like the ARK Revolution ETF including companies like Tesla, Roku and Square and then you can also have ETFs that will track the 100 biggest companies in the world based on market cap and you can also get ETFs that will track the overall performance of a country's stock market. So you have the ASX 200, the NZ Top 50, and most notably in America, the S&P 500. This is essentially a collection of the top 500 biggest publicly traded companies in America, and it's believed to be an accurate representation of the overall stock market. When people talk about ETFs, ones that track the S&P 500 are essentially the gold standard. It gives you a very consistent return of roughly 10% per year, and this is because it includes some of the biggest and most recognizable companies businesses like Facebook Amazon and Apple are all part of this ETF and when you invest into it you get a small piece of the overall stock market and this makes it appealing for a lot of people you get a wide diversified portfolio with many strong well-established companies which gives you that nice consistent return of 10% and saying that the process of making a lot of money from this investment is very slow it takes several decades to make a reasonable return and when you look at the fast gains of other ETFs like the ARK Innovation ETF that has gone up over 200%, it can sway your opinion and make you not so interested in something like the S&P 500. However, with the ARK Innovation ETF, the price fluctuations are a lot more volatile, so you have to balance out how much risk you're willing to take with your money and how fast you want those gains to come. Another option is looking at individual stocks. So with this, you also have a balance between more established blue chip companies like Facebook, Amazon, Amazon and Microsoft or growth stocks which borrow a lot of money and can see a far greater rise in share price but also be a much more volatile investment. Businesses such as Tesla and Square which have seen tremendous gains in a very short space of time but also massive drops in their share price along the way. Again if you look at the average return for Apple over a five year period in comparison to the average return for Tesla over the same five year time frame you can see that Tesla far outperforms Apple but again the volatility 
volatility is much greater with Tesla so you have to consider these factors when making an investment. I would say as a beginner or even for any investor looking at an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 such as the ones offered by Vanguard or iShares is a great way to start out with investing and once you gain a bit more confidence and if you actually want to put up the time and energy to research companies you can start looking at individual businesses. S&P 500 also removes a lot of the difficulties that come with investing like having to perfectly time the market or research companies before putting your money into them. It's just a slow methodical process where you consistently put your money into this investment and let it grow and compound over time. Number three is making your investing automatic. You want to make sure that you can invest your money on a weekly basis very consistently and remove as much friction as possible. The best way to do this is by setting up an auto investment plan where money is taken out of your bank account and automatically invest it into the stock market without you having to do anything. The majority of brokers will offer auto investments giving you a unique bank account number that's tied to your brokerage account where you transfer your money to. If you have to manually go on your phone or your computer and make an investment every single week chances are that there will be times where you forget or you might not have enough money because you've spent it on other things. If your money is automatically taken out of your account it's like it was never there and then you never really think about not having it because in reality you still have that money but it's gone on something productive where your money will gain value and make more money for you as opposed to spending your income on material items with things that don't really matter to you and won't mean much a few months after you've bought them. This idea of having a consistent amount invested in the stock market is called dollar cost averaging because it allows you to capture all the ups and downs of the stock market so that you don't miss out on any profits and stops you from having to try and time the market. Just to illustrate how important it is to always consistently put your money into the stock market. Here is a chart that shows the returns you would have made from an initial investment into the S&P 500 20 years ago. So if you had just fully invested that $10,000 at the beginning of this 20 year period, your portfolio would be worth roughly $30,000. However, if you had missed out on just the best 10 days over this 20 year period, the value of your portfolio would essentially be cut in half to roughly $15,000. And you can see that the price drops in the portfolio become more and more dramatic as you look at different points on this chart. Even to the extent that if you had missed out on the best 60 days, you would have a portfolio worth just over $2,000. So there's about a $28,000 difference between fully investing in the S&P 500 and missing out on the best 60 days. You would have actually lost money on your investment if you had just been sitting on the sidelines and trying to look at the best buying point with the stock market. So you don't want to make that mistake of always looking for the perfect time to buy into the market because chances are you'll be missing out on profits. And all the time people will tell you that the stock market is overvalued or that you're paying too much for your investments but in reality what is overvalued and undervalued changes year by year. People would have thought that the price of companies five years ago was expensive but now they're a bargain. So you have to always keep that in mind that the prices of things generally climb if they are a good and valuable company and just because something looks expensive now it will more likely than not be cheap in the future. Number four is managing your expectations around investing. When people think of investing they might think of a scene from Wolf of Wall Street of people making millions of dollars in just a few minutes. They might think of it the same as making money on a slot machine at a casino but in reality the majority of investing is methodical and almost boring. You should think about your investments as a secondary savings, a collection of money that you're not going to touch and you're just going to let it grow and compound over time and that's really one of the best ways to get the most out of your investing. Compound interest is the reason that the dollar cost average strategy really works and essentially compound interest is where you earn interest on your interest. Taking a look at this chart here of a thousand dollars invested over a 40 year period in the S&P 500 keeping in mind that 10% return that we talked about earlier you can see how little the gains are in the first few years of your investing with there being very small changes in the value of your portfolio. It's only until about year 20 where you really start to see some major gains and then following on from this the jumps in your portfolio start to grow larger and larger to the point where there are massive jumps in it and you are making a massive return on your investment. A famous quote by Einstein related to compound interest says that he who understands it earns it and he who doesn't pays it. It's a really great strategy that's also popularized by some of the biggest investors like Warren Buffett. Taking a look at this chart which demonstrates the wealth that Warren Buffett has grown over time 
time, you can see that the vast majority of his money was made after the age of 66. And you can see how small the gains are in the value of his total portfolio through his 20s, 30s and 40s. It's only in those later years of his life where that compounding effect really starts to take place and you see those massive jumps in portfolio value. So that's the same way that you should look at your investing as a slow incremental gain on your wealth and don't try and rush things by looking at new and up and coming companies and trying to make a large amount of money in a short space of time. You can definitely do this but it can also be a losing strategy especially when you first start out with investing and are just trying to find your bearings in the stock market. Now that you're familiar with an effective investing strategy you might want to look at some common investing mistakes. Check out this video on screen that will show you some key mistakes to avoid that I have personally made and they'll save you a ton of time and money 